Welcome students. This session is for MA Previous English Literature, Paper 3rd. In this paper, you have poems by Thomas Gray and we'll be dealing with his famous poem, The Progress of Poesy, in this session. So as you know, students, that Thomas Gray was born on 26 December 1716. He died on 30th July 1771. He's a famous poet of pre-romantic times. So let's know about Thomas Gray more. Students, you know that Gray was an English poet, letter writer, classical scholar, and professor at Pembroke College, Cambridge. He was a self-critical writer who published only 13 poems in his lifetime, despite being very popular. He was even offered the position of poet laureate in 1757, though he declined. His writing is conventionally considered to be pre-romantic because his poetry signals a shift from the characteristics of Augustan age. As you know, Augustan age is also called as neoclassical age. So somewhere he is in middle uh, of uh, neoclassical age and romantic age. So uh, you can say that Thomas Gray was a famous pre-romantic uh, poet because he has qualities of both the ages in his works. So he has the characteristics of Augustan age. Uh, with its public focus on heroic couplets and satire uh, to the Romantic age, with its focus on private thoughts, lyrical poems, with alternating rhyme schemes, and exploration of the self. So he has characteristics of both. In the 18th century, art was regarded as artifice, as the popularity of ornate, flowery language. The Romantics wanted art not to be so artificial. So this is the major difference between the writers of uh, 18th century, that is neoclassical times and romantics. Uh, and great poems reveal the characteristics of both literary periods. He abandons the heroic couplet for metrically irregular and inventive stanza form. So he does not follow those um, uh, metrically uh, structured heroic couplet. Rather, he has that metrically irregular inventive stanza forms. One of the most profound assumptions that Gray contributes to the study of literature is a notion that poets are not simply those who produce poems. For Gray, it involved having a certain sensitivity whether the poet ever wrote or not. So for him, poets was not the person who was just writing poems, rather a sensitive poet, a sensitive person uh, can be put into the category of being poet. So a poet needs to have that sensitivity whether the poet ever wrote or not. In other words, a poet was simply a certain kind of a person. It has been said that for the 18th century, heard melodies are sweet, whereas for romantics, it is the unheard melodies that are best. So this is the difference again between the 18th century and the uh, romantics. Gray is better understood as a transitional figure between these two periods. So students are going to find the characteristics of both these uh, periods, uh, neoclassical age as well as romantic age in the poetry of uh, Thomas Gray, who, is, uh, who can be put into the category of transition period, or you can say it as pre-romantic. Let's have a little idea about the poem that we are going to talk about in this uh, session, that is uh, the progress of poesy. The structure of this ode, so first of all, you should know that it's an ode, and it's difficult Pindaric form. So it's it's a, a Pindaric form of ode, made famous by the Greek poet Pindar. And it ties to one of the core ideas Gray communicates in his lyrics. So uh, it, there is an idea which he wishes to convey through his uh, poetry, and he has written this poem in the form of Pindaric ode style. In the ninth stanza of the poem, Gray praises the muses who inspired the poets of the past chronologically. So he begins with uh, uh, talking about the source of poetry and then about the effect of poetry and then talking about the whole uh, famous poets like uh, Shakespeare, Dryden and all. So he begins very quite chronologically in his uh, poetry, beginning with the ancient Greeks, moving to the Roman and Italian poets and ending with English poets such as Dryden and Shakespeare. Gray attempts to describe poesy as a single heritage inspired by universal human emotions. So in this, from the uh, title itself, Progress of Poesy Students, you come to know that how he is trying to describe poetry as a single heritage which is inspired by so many writers of, from so many lands. 
are two central ideas that Gray communicates in his poem, Progress of Poesy. The first is that poetry is powerful as evidenced by its presence in human communities across time and geography. So we also understand that poetry has its powerful effect and uh, you can find its development across communities, across geography. Gray repeated references to ancients singing poetry and echoing from the rugged hills of Greece and Italy are evidence of this point. So uh, there is a reference to the Greek writers and the poetry that is coming through from Italy. The second and the most important central idea of Grace Ode is that English poets owe a debt to the ancient Greeks and Romans. So he somewhere wishes to state this idea that English writers have uh, been inspired a lot by these Greek and, uh, right, and Italy writers. So he says that they owe a debt to them. Gray pos posits that English poetry is built on ancient foundation and suggests that muses of ancient Greece are still active in England. Somewhere the inspiration and you know that muses are the nine goddess of art and literature and they are inspiring uh, English writers uh, till date. So this is somewhere he says that there is a development of this poetry which began from the Greek land uh, going towards Italy and then uh, you can see the development of poetry in Britain that is in poets of England. Now students let's come to the text of the poem. As you know that this poem is written in Pindaric old style which uh, means that uh, it follows uh, the Greek poet Pindar's old style which uh, consisted of uh, triple units or uh, groups of triple units in uh, uh, a poem and here also you can see that this poem is divided clearly into three parts where one part has like been marked as 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 and then 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 and so on. Uh, this is uh, the way Pindar wrote and let's have a look at uh, the text now. He writes, Awake, Aeolian lyre, awake, and give to rapture all thy trembling strings. So here uh, he mentions, he refers to the god of wind, Aeolian, and when this wind, it plays its lyre, everything turns to happiness. So when the trembling strings, when the music is created out of this lyre, there is a lot of happiness in the spring season that is spread. From Helicon's harmonious spring, so the language in this poem is quite metaphorical, where poetry is compared to springs and the poetry is compared to flowers. Uh, when spring season comes, Helicon is referred here and Helicon is a place where muses live. So somewhere you can see that he's talking about the source of poetry, as you know that these uh, nine goddesses of art and literature, muses, they are the source of uh, poetry, you can say they inspire poetry. So this poem, when spring comes, it can be seen in the form of springs, which in a thousand rills their mazy progress takes. So just as the water, it flows from this uh, Mount Helicon in thousand different streams in a zigzag manner, uh, so is poetry. It takes upon its uh, source from uh, this place where goddess of art and literature live on Mount Helicon and it from this source it flows in various nations and takes its own uh, course that is zigzag. The laughing flowers that around them blow drink life and fragrance as they flow. So here I say that with this uh, nurturing aspect of the brook uh, with this nurturing aspect of these uh, springs. So you can see that there are a lot of flowers that blow around them and they uh, fill the whole area with life and fragrance. Somewhere water here is symbol of uh, life and uh, flowers are symbol of fragrance. So, so such is the effect of poetry that from wherever it uh, flows, wherever it uh, uh, passes through, it uh, creates uh, a happy and uh, a fragrant atmosphere around. Now the rich stream of music winds along, deep, majestic, smooth and strong. Through verdant vales and serous golden rain, now rolling down the steeper main. So here somewhere poetry is compared to music 
and all these adjectives deep majestic smooth and strong they apply to music they apply to rivers they apply to poetry in the same way so from this mount helicon uh, you can say music or uh, streams or uh, poetry it flows in a deep majestic smooth and strong manner that whatever might be the uh, aspect of uh, poetry whether it's uh, mild or whether it's fierce uh, it is very beautiful and this poetry flows through the verdant vales the green valleys and Ceres golden rain now Ceres here is referred to the goddess of earth so uh, everywhere on the earth in all the countries beyond geographical boundaries you can see uh, the presence of poetry now rolling down the steep amain headlong impetuous seed pour here reference is to a waterfall and poetry can also be seen uh, as a waterfall so it's not just the mild aspect of poetry even its furious and uh, fiery aspect also is beautiful to look at the rocks and nodding groves rebellow to the roar and you can see that all the trees the waving trees and the uh, groves uh, the rocks they are resounding to the uh, to the voice of water and here it also denotes that poetry has its effect all over the earth whether it's mild effect or it's a fierce effect it's beautiful in all its aspect and it covers uh, the whole earth irrespective of the countries or any place now this brings us to the stanza 1.2 thomas gray writes o sovereign of the willing soul parent of sweet and solemn breathing airs this stands as students it uh, concerns with the magic of poetry and he says that poetry is very powerful uh, and here the sovereign is here used for muses and these muses they have a great control over over human nature and they are the parent of sweet and solemn breathing airs so uh, dryden in his other poetry writes that uh, what passion cannot music raise and quell in in a poetry he writes this and this reminds me of that that poetry has so much of power over human emotions that it can bring any sweet or serious uh, mood to uh, humans enchanting shell the sudden cares and frantic passions here their soft control so this poetry this music is a magical it has a magical effect on human beings and it can suddenly uh, control uh, the the cares the tensions of human beings and the wild passions uh, they hear their soft control it has uh, the capacity to control uh, the wild passions in humans or all the tensions it can put away and then uh, poet gives two examples the first is on thracia's hill the lord of war has curbed the fury of his car that's the first example he gives of uh, poetry on uh, this lord of war that is god of war mars and he says that uh, the, with the effect of poetry he is able to curb the fury of his car uh, he can he is considered as the lord of war who is quite angry and the effect of poetry uh, can even make him stop the fury the ang his angry chariot and dropped his thirsty lance at thy command the poetry is so magical that it can even convert the nature of a uh, god of uh, war that is mars and he can drop his thirsty lance with the command of poetry watching on the sceptered hand of jove thy magic lulls the feathered king with ruffled plumes and flagging wings so there's an image of jupiter of jove Uh, who has an eagle perched on his uh, hand which is sceptered which is full of power and uh, the effect of poetry you can say the magic of poetry is this that even that fierce eagle which is sitting on the hand of jupiter uh, gets lulled with the uh, voice of poetry and this eagle which is so fiery it ruffles its plumes it just folds its wings and uh you can see that quenched in dark clouds of slumber lie so with just a relaxing way uh this eagle can be seen uh, lying in the slumber uh 
in the, among the dark clouds, the terror of his beak and the lightning of his eye. So this is the effect of poetry on him that even his fierce eyes of uh, eagle, they are subdued and uh, they are uh, full of sleepiness. Uh, this is, you can say, the magic of poetry. We'll continue this poem in my next session.